Hey guys, what's up? So in this magical video, I'm actually going to be talking about a really important thing that we used to do previously, but we have forgotten. So as soon as component properties came out, other designers, including myself, uh, I'm not sure about other designers, but myself and obviously other design systems stopped using base structures for components, like let's say buttons. And buttons is a pretty basic example where people used to use base structures. And the reason for obviously using base structures was, let's say if I have a button like this, this is the small size button. And maybe in all of the small sizes, currently the icon size is 12 pixels, but I wanted to update it to 14. How would I go about and do that? So I can go to one of the icons or one of the buttons sorry and I can enable the icons which are using component properties this particular button is using some component properties like the icon instance the icon left icon right and stuff along those lines right so what would I do to actually update all of the small variants to 14 I would have to manually go ahead and I can use a plugin as well to select all of the icon left and icon right buttons in all of the small variants not all of the variants so how many variants do I have for small Let's say four here, four here, four here, four here, 16. I would have to individually go ahead and select all 16 variants. And I would have to go ahead and select them and then obviously go ahead to my sizing panel and change that to 14. Sorry, I changed that to, that to 140, so 14 and 14. So I have to do that for every single variant. And we used to use base structures so that I can just update it in one place and it could be updated. So that's one issue that we had which is why we used base structures. An additional thing, imagine if I wanted to introduce another element that's, that is going to be using component properties, like an unread badge. So maybe I have an unread badge, like a circle, something like this, which is let's say going to be positioned absolutely. It's going to be somewhere here. The height is gonna be eight pixels and maybe the color is gonna be P100 or something along those lines. So I would have to go ahead and copy paste this in all 16 variants, actually not all 16 variants. I would have to paste them in all of the different variants that I have here, which may be close to a hundred variants. And I would have to adjust the sizing, the positioning and all of that stuff, because obviously I have to go ahead and manually make these changes in each single variant. Isn't that like freaking insane? And that's what basically Figma has turned into, like people are, or designers have turned to, they are creating things without base structures and I mean it's okay there's nothing wrong with it it may even be something that Figma uh, or the people from Figma themselves actually um, acknowledge or promote but this is not something that I think is the most efficient way of doing things so I have actually created an example here in this example as you can see we have the same thing that we're achieving here with just these small number of variants so I have a uh, three buttons, three base buttons that are the small size, the medium size, and the large size. And as you can see, we have these um, different states that are obviously in the actual button component them itself. And we have the states that are coming from the actual component. And obviously the different types like primary, secondary, success, and danger. These are coming from obviously the main button itself. But the sizing, whether it's gonna be a medium size, whether it's gonna be a large size, whether it's going to be a small size, all of that is coming from the base button. I did not have to manually go ahead and create all of these things. The left icon property, the right icon, the unread badge or anything else that you actually wanna add is all coming from here. And in this video, I actually went ahead and showed you how if I wanted to update this icon to 14, I can do that. But let's say if I wanted to revert it to 12 again, I can just go ahead and I can do 12 and all of the variants are going to be updated. If I, let's say, wanted to update it in this particular instance to, let's say, I don't know, 16, I can just go ahead and change that to 16 here. And all of the different states and everything is now gonna have 16. If I change that to medium, as you can see, this is going to be 16. So this is a really efficient way of doing things and creating components, which not a lot of people are talking about, which I think is pretty ingenious. And it's a really great way of doing things. I did not actually see a way a reason why we shouldn't do this. But if you definitely figure out a way, definitely let me know. But this really saves me a lot of time maintaining my own components. So just have a look at the video. I'm going to show you how to actually create everything that we just talked about here. Now, before we go forward, I would like to let you know that I've recently introduced my premium Figma Noob to Pro course that's gonna help you take your design skills to the next level. It has topics covering from the basics to advanced topics like auto layout, prototyping, components, you name it. 
So if you really want to take your design skills and not only just design skill, but your earning skills and earning potential to the next level as well, definitely go check out the course link in the description. Additionally, I have a voucher code for you guys as well, especially my subscribers and viewers. If you use the AM subscriber voucher, you're going to get a 50% off on that as well. So I've already created a base button. It's using the same sizes, the same colors and everything similar to the three buttons here. So that's it. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate this here. I'm going to create a component around it. It's already going to be an auto layout. And I'm going to say this is going to be our new button or something along those lines, right? I am then going to go ahead and I'm going to say I want to add multiple variants here. This variant is going to be the hover state. This previous one obviously is the default state. Let me just go ahead and actually update the property name to state as well. And we're going to go ahead and just update the colors. So this is going to be 300. This one is going to be 400. And then in the active state, we're just going to say that this is going to be P500 because those are the colors that we've used above as well. And then obviously we need a disabled state. In the disabled state, we basically, I think, have a color of N90. I'm just using styles right now. I'm not going into variables that much because we're using styles in the previous button. And the background is N30. Okay. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to say the background is N30 here. So that's done. This is our de disabled button as well. And I am going to fast forward this video right now to create the different instances for the uh, secondary button for the small size, the success secondary button and the danger secondary or sorry, the danger small button, small button for all of these things. Okay, so now that we're done with our small states for the buttons, uh, in order to create the larger sizes, again, it's really easy. Why? Because of the base structure. I mean, you don't have to do much in order to create the larger sizes. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to create another variant property called size. And the first size is going to be small, which is the one that we've just created right now. I'm going to duplicate all of them. And I'm going to say the size here is going to be our medium size. In this medium size, we're just going to press enter and we're going to say this is going to be medium. So as you can see, I didn't have to do anything in order to create these things. It's much easier with base buttons as well. And then I'm just going to go here. I'm going to copy all of them and I'm going to say this one is going to be large. And in this large state, I can then just go ahead and actually press enter and I can select the base button to be large and everything should work automatically. So there you go. I basically have my buttons. One thing that I think is messed up here is the icons did not get updated. So we have to just go ahead and update them. So let me just actually see what the issue is here. So I'm just going to select both of these sizes. And we're going to see, okay, unfortunately, this is not linked. And also this is linked to P300 of the variable, which is something that we don't want here, just for this particular video. And then we have a P300 here as well. So that should fix it. Okay, that's done. So now, I mean, let's say if we wanted to update the icon on all of the small sizes, the first thing actually, even before that, is I'm just gonna go here, I'm gonna go to the layers, I'm gonna say this is going to be the left icon. And then I'm also gonna like basically I'm linking the component properties here and I'm going to go here. I'm going to say this is going to be our right icon and let's say these are visible by default. So now if let's say I actually access this button here, I, as you can see, I have the state, which I can change the hover state, default state, disabled state, and all of that stuff. I have the primary, secondary, tertiary, danger, and all of that medium size, large size, all of that's there, but I don't obviously have the icons or the component properties that are being referenced. So in order to easily reference them, I can just go here. I can say, I want to expose the nested instances from the base button. And now I can easily go ahead and I can change the size and everything. Now, this is something that's extremely important. I can go ahead and I can change the left size and everything along those lines. But let's say if this button was small, if I go ahead and update this to medium, as you can see, it's not working. The size is not being updated, which is exactly why I created the medium sizes here as well. And it didn't take much time. But if we actually had to fix that, there's an easy way to fix it. First of all, I'm just going to go ahead and make it small again. Now, as you can see, the reason why it's not fixed is because the height here is fixed. 
and the height is fixed because obviously I haven't given it a bottom or top padding and I haven't given it a hug content. So if I go ahead and do that, this should be fixed. So I can say, okay, the top and bottom spacing here should be nine pixels. So I can go ahead and I can say this should be nine and this should be hug content. So the height automatically is gonna be 32. Similarly, I'm gonna come here. Okay, I'm gonna say 11.5 padding. So I'm just gonna say 11.5 here. I'm gonna say this is also going to be hug content. And I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna say 14.5. So I can go here and I can say 14.5 padding here and this is going to be hug content, so that's working. So now if we have a look at it and if we try to update this size, obviously that's gonna work. But if we, let's say, ignore that and if we, let's say, did not even create this variant, we don't have to create this variant, it's not necessary if we do this hug content trick. If we go ahead and update this to large or medium or something now, obviously, the large isn't working for some reason because I accidentally did not give this hug content. So, okay, that's done. So large, that's working. Medium, that's working. Small, that's working. Do you know what this means? This means that I can just go ahead and I can delete all of these large sizes as well. If let's say we're actually giving this the base buttons a hug content. Sometimes you don't wanna give this a hug content. Sometimes you wanna keep it fixed and all of that stuff. If that's the case for sure, I mean, keep it by all means. But if you don't wanna do that, if you wanna save the number of components that you're creating and handle everything with the base button, you can do something like this and you can have the medium size, the large size, the medium, small, everything, the icons are going to be updating and everything. J with just these items and imagine how many variants we're creating here. And here we just have the small number of variants. I'm not even sure like how many variants we have, but as you can see, they're very small. Similarly, if I now wanted to, let's say, go ahead and actually update this. If I wanted to update this to, let's say, 14 pixels, it would be much easier, right? I can just press K and I can say the small sizes or the icon for the small sizes should be 14 here. I can go here and I can say this should also be 14 and everything's updated. All of the small variants are updated. I don't have to individually go to them to update it based on the previous thing that we just did. So these are just some of the benefits for the base button. Similarly, if I, let's say, wanted to have an unread badge or something along those lines. So let's say I can create a circle here. I can say this is going to be positioned absolutely. It's gonna be somewhere at the top. Maybe the size is gonna be a bit bigger, like maybe eight pixels or something, who knows? So maybe just let's say it's gonna be positioned here and the uh, color for this is let's say going to be something. I don't even know what the color is. Maybe it's gonna be P100 or something. Let's say this is the color and maybe let's move it a bit here. I think this is maybe okay. So let's say we have something like this here. I can go ahead and I can say this is also going to be a property. Uh, the property name is gonna be, let's say something like, I don't know, uh, badge, unread badge or something. And the unread badge is gonna be here. And similarly, it's gonna be here. Let's probably place it somewhere. Uh, maybe here we want it to be bigger, like maybe 10 pixels. And here we want it to be, let's say 12 pixels. So I'm just gonna make it 12 something like this and maybe it's gonna be here or something, who knows. So that's the unread badge and now if I let's say wanna disable it, I can easily just go ahead and disable it here. Like unread badge, unread badge for sure, it's not disabling for some reason. So let's see why that is not working. So let's go here, let's see, okay, if I let's say hide it from here, Okay, that seems to work. Let's just reset it in case something got messed up. So as you can see now it's working, sorry. Um, and then we have the medium size. I can enable the unread badge. Everything's working fine in just these small number of variants. Isn't this freaking amazing? So yeah, that's what I wanted to cover in this video, the power of base buttons and the structure that we can actually get without even creating multiple variants for different sizes and then controlling everything from the top level. Uh, if you, one disclaimer that I again wanna point out, if you are keeping these as fixed, the height as fixed, then definitely go ahead and create the sizes here in the variants themselves or in the actual component themselves itself. Um, but if you have hug contents, then it's gonna work. You don't even have to create the different states for the sizes. So that's gonna be pretty much it. Also, don't forget to add an underscore in this particular, this base button uh, component so that it's not actually exported when you publish this library. So that's gonna be pretty much it. This is another way of creating your components. It's much easier, much, much more manageable, but not a lot of people are going to do this because they probably are not aware of the benefits or just don't even know um, what's going on. So that's gonna be pretty much it. Do subscribe, do hit the bell icon, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.
Just one important thing to be really cautious about when you're actually using hug contents is let's say if you actually go ahead and increase your icon size to something preposterous like maybe 20 pixels that is going to obviously mean that the icon or the button height is going to change so you have to be cognizant of that or let's say you went ahead and changed the button size to something it doesn't even have to be something preposterous if you just changed it from 12 to 14 that's also going to mess up the height of the button so if you let's say want to maintain it at 32 pixels you have to obviously go ahead and reduce this to let's say 7.5 or something along those lines so those are things that you really need to keep in mind when you're updating uh, your buttons uh, or the elements within your buttons especially if you're using hug contents